So I cut the cord quite a few years ago now, probably around 2010, because I'm not really a person who watches any television. The only reason I even had it then was because I have kids that I thought needed to watch television, learned they didn't. Anyways, Mr. Robot is one of the few shows I do watch. And it's not just the show, it's the intellectual challenges and off-site content that they have that makes it that much more interesting. So I figured I could share with you like the rabbit hole that is a little piece of information seen in one little piece of the show and how that generates lots of time, what I refer to as out of show, out of band content. So let's take you down this rabbit hole from this little piece of information we got just from the season two trailer. And now these little Easter egg hunts um, are all over the show. So this is gonna be just one example, but I'm gonna show you the complexity of it and why it's so much fun. So the premise of the show, Mr. Robot, is a hacker named Elliot, which we meet in the first season, and now we're in season two. He is out to stop Evil Corp or E Corp. They're actually not called Evil Corp. That's the name he gives them in the show. So he does this by planning on hacking them because they control the banking system and by destroying them, he will relieve people of all their debt. There's your show premise. Now, the reality of it gets really deep and here's some of the Easter eggs and the intellectual nature of some of the things I like about the show. So let's really dig into this Easter egg here. Remember so here's the trailer back. for season two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward. It's great finding on YouTube because at the 42nd mark here, we see an evidence box and we see a phone number, 212-804-6003. So let's call that number and see what we find. So here's what happens when we call Thank the number. Thank you for calling the E-Corp helpline. Following recent events, we are experiencing unusually heavy caller volume. To avoid waiting and for more information, please visit our help page at W. In order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. Now I'll spare you the rest of the DTMF tones, and we'll skip ahead here. Call and appreciate your patience. To repeat this message, please press 1. So we had a whole series of DTMF tones, and like I said, I spared you them, but I'll spell them out for you. They're ones and zeros, which means they're binary. But there's more to it. We had a quote. So here's the ones and zeros spelled out. And we had a quote from Francis Bacon in here. So let's see. Francis Bacon, in order for the light to shine so brightly, the darkness must be present. Francis Bacon, look him up on Wikipedia. You know, here's some information about him. He's from the 1500s. But what's really interesting is down towards the bottom here, we talk about the Bacon cipher. And a Bacon cipher is a substitution cipher where we can use A's and B's to represent what looks like gibberish and turn it into letters. So let's go through the Bacon cipher and assume the zeros are A's, the ones are B's, and it turns into this. So you can find this at mothereff.in slash bacon. It's a Bacon translator. And when we put that in, we get this, and here's the plain text conversion of it. So let's put that in as a website. So, and we'll change the dot to an actual dot. And we're presented with the eCorp website. But the eCorp website falls apart and melts away, and now we're presented with this eyeball. You need to open your eyes before we can open your mind and we get a blinking cursor. Now that for C, for F. Now if anyone knows and you think it's only a partial alphabet, it's more than that. This is hexadecimal. And I'm not gonna type out the whole thing here, but I have it all typed out. It is, we're gonna take it in my bash here and go four C, four F, four F, four B, X two, five, 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 zero, and see what that's hexadecimal for, look up. So we can take look up and maybe put it in here. So, and it does nothing. But if we look up, this seemingly random blinking cursor isn't so random. Turns out it's blinking out Morse code. But if you don't know Morse code, it's actually blinking out leave me here. So then we take and put leave me here and hit go you solve the puzzle. 
and we're presented with this and then we're offered to sign up for their mailing list. Now, this is just one small little intellectual puzzle and I simplified it a lot, but that's the kind of challenge. And this is going on through a series of people on Reddit and other people that are techie and geeky like me. We're excited about things like this because we get to chase things down the rabbit hole from a phone number seen here to a website to a bacon cipher to a hexadecimal code that's a riddle to look at a blinking cursor that's Morse code that then brings you to this website and ultimately offering to uh, join the F Society mailing list, which the F Society is the hacking group for the show. So this is why I like Mr. Robot. This type of intellectualism, I do not see in a lot of our shows. Um, most of the time they just string a bunch of gibberish uh, computer terms together and consider that a show. like. C cyber CSI or any of those. I've, there's like super cuts of how bad that is. So this is one of the reasons I like Mr. Robot so much. And this is just one piece of some of the off show content that uh, keeps me watching there. So if you're interested in the show, it's not all boring. It's actually a very exciting show. Uh, so even if you're not into some of this deep offsite content, it's still fun to watch. Uh, but I just wanted to share that with you guys and why I watch Mr. Robot. Thanks. We don't have much time. They have a secret surveillance program on us. What's the plan? We can't stay here. You did what you had to do. I did this for them. The FBI nails you, it's lights out. Keep it together.